on Change Your Voice, Change Your Life. In studio uh, with me is a book, a book. And it's called Curing Hopeless Voices. I'm the only doctor in the world reporting cures of spasmodic dysphonia of the strangled voice. Henry Fonda had the condition. Shadow Stevens, the national personality, had the condition. Keith Erickson had the, the condition. They're all cured by what I do is direct voice rehabilitation. This book is free on my website voice-doctor.com. It's free. Read the book and it will explain who and what and how things are going on and why the medical profession prefers to guarantee there are no cures to the condition. Just a few minutes before we went on this program, part two, uh, this young man, Nick, who's the cameraman, uh, I showed how he can get the strangled voice in 60 seconds get the strangled voice. So if you don't know why the cause is Mother Nature, you're violating Mother Nature, then let me explain to you. You can prove to yourself you can get the strangled voice in 60 seconds, and then you can get out of it if you know what to do. Blow out all the air. Blow out all the air you have, and then count aloud to 50, slowly and loudly. Blow out all the air, count aloud to 50, slowly and loudly. And in 60 seconds, you basically will have the strangled voice. Your eyes will begin to show pressure, your face and your, your neck muscles. Why? Because strangled voice cases, such as those who experience the problem, don't talk on air, believe it or not. They reverse the breathing. They don't use air. It's like trying to drive the car, a normal car, without gas. If it's a hybrid, it will work. The strangled voice, the spasmodic dysphonic voice, is caused by a violation, the pollution of Mother Nature's edict. Breathe when you talk. Breathe when you talk. Believe it or not, patients with the strangled voice and other troubled voices do not breathe when they're talking. You cannot talk without air. It's impossible. Now the issue is you're told by the medical profession, my colleagues, I served on the staff and faculty at UCLA Medical Center for eight years under Jack Pressman, and he said I was the best uh, voice doctor he ever knew. I'm a PhD. I specialize in voice. And I find that voice problems are caused by a pollution or violation of Mother Nature's use. Talk on air and talk in the face. Did you know that 90 plus percent of people who have a bad, raspy, troubled voice are talking in the lower throat, that steep throat? They're talking like this. They have that voice problem because they're talking wrong. The medical profession and my colleagues or the view that bad and raspy voices are neurological, that there's something wrong with you, and they treat it medically. My answer to uh, their approach is to tell the patient, change the way you're using your voice. I wrote a book called Change Your Voice, Change Your Life. It's in the ninth pr 19th printing right now. It's going into the 20th printing. And you can get it in the library free. It's free in the library. This book, Curing Hopeless Voices, an alternative to Botox, Botox for spasmodic, spasmodic dysphonia, and they also use it for muscle tension disorder. Uh, Botox is a state of the art in the treatment of choice in the medical profession. For whom? I find it's the, the choice because that's what they do. That's, they're well-intentioned, but that's what they're doing. I'm going up to UC San Francisco to talk about how I help cure spasmodic dysphonia. And I'm trying to tell the speech pathologists and the ear, nose, and throat doctors how I do it. 
I'd been to UC San Francisco in 1998. I reported cures there. They gave me two minutes, two minutes. Four lasting cures, three from UCLA Medical Center, one from the Mayo Clinic. This time they're giving me almost two hours. The situation is changing. Mother Nature is coming and getting its due in what I'm doing called direct voice rehabilitation. What I do is all natural. I change the focus of the voice by changing the pitch. Pitch is a very simple modality. I help patients to change the pitch. They're talking in a lower throat. When you change, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you put your voice up in your face, it opens the lower throat and the strangled strain and the bad and raspy voices markedly disappear. I report in peer review, uh, in medical journals, in my field, the American Speech Language Hearing Association, but what I do is off the radar screen. It's all natural and it's simple. And here's something that you should consider. You can do it for yourself. You can do it for yourself. You can try. You can't hurt yourself. It's all natural. Mm -hmm. Hum the first bar of happy birthday. <laughs> Just hum it. And you'll find that your voice basically goes up into the face where all good and great voices are. The medical profession is telling you to take acid reflux for as long as you can or will. They believe acid reflux is causing bad, raspy voices and also contributing to the strangled voice. I don't. Clinically, I find it's not real. The study was sponsored by Merck in 1992 telling you bad and raspy voices are due to acid reflux. My answer to them is poppycock. But they run the show, and I see the patients who have tried um, acid reflux drugs for months and years, and they tell me ongoingly it, ha it hasn't helped the bad and raspy voice. It's good for heartburn and indigestion. I have no argument with that. But when they extend the market to bad and raspy voices or spasmodic dysphonia, I'm off their boat. What am I talking about? I'm talking about self-help, self-help. Go to the library, get change your voice, get uh, change your life, get s uh, stop committing voice suicide. You're committing voice suicide by the way you talk. You have no awareness of where you should place your voice. You're holding your breath when you talk if you have the strangled voice. You're reversing it. These are very simple Mother Nature answers to how to get a better, more effective voice. Doesn't cost you any money. So I'm stepping on the toes of those who are in the medical profession and who are in academia. Speech therapy never works, never reports a single cure for the strangled voice, never. The American, medical, the American Medical Association on its websites in this country guarantee there are no cures. Recently there was a program, Medical Mysteries, which told you that there are no cures, it's a neurological problem. Dr. Paul Flint, a very fine ear, nose, and throat doctor, well-intentioned, told us in a major program that spasmodic dysphonia is a neurological problem. My answer to Dr. Flint, uh, Flint is very simple. Poppycock, doctor. There are cures. I've been reporting cures for years and years, over 35 years. Since they guarantee there are no cures in the medical profession, in academia in my field, they guarantee it. And the drug company, Allegan, that funds basically the National Spasmodic Dysphonic Association, that I'm sorry to tell you, is influential and basically the only source the American Speech Language Hearing Association used to determine that Botox is a treatment of choice. This association, the NSDA, National Spasmodic Dysphonic Association, is basically funded by Allegan. And it's their view that there are no cures of spasmodic dysphonia. I'm reporting the cures. The interesting aspect to all of this is that my field, the American Speech Language Hearing Association, has banned, banned the book Curing Hopeless Voices on false grounds, saying I guarantee cures. I never guarantee anything. I can't guarantee we'll be alive tomorrow. But the American Medical Association in this country, the establishment, my field, ASHA, the American Speech Language Hearing Association, and the establishment guarantees there are no cures. It is run, ASHA is run, I write in this book, page 111 to 117, that my field is run by the National Spasmodic Dysphonic Association, the only source that reviewed the position on spasmodic dysphonia. 
when it had the review. It claims through its president, Jerry Logan, in 1994, that they had three sources, Oni Aronson of the Mayo Clinic and Christy Ludlow of the NIH, National Institutes of Health. Both Oni Aronson, Dr. Aronson, an icon in the field, and Dr. Ludlow, in writing, state they were not involved. It's interesting what's going on. The cover-up of cures is one interesting aspect. You want to know how to get the strangled voice? Blow out all the air and try to talk aloud for 60 or 50 seconds, slowly, and you will get the strangled voice. Try it, and then go back to your normal voice and breathe properly. Just breathe and talk on air. Let's listen to cures of spasmodic dysphonia, cures of a condition that the medical profession worldwide guarantees does not exist, that my field, the American Speech Language Hearing Association, prevents its members, well over 100,000 members, to know there are cures. And Allegan, the Botox maker, is telling us there are no cures as well. When there are cures, I've had peer review in 1980. I continue to report ongoing cures. I report the cures of Cedar sinai in 1982 and 1990. We invited at Fallon, the number one HMO in the country. And I'm going up to UC San Francisco again, having been there in 1998 for two minutes to report cures, three from UCLA Medical Center and one from the Mayo Clinic. I've reported cures of spasmodic dysphonia diagnosed by the top ear, nose, and throat doctors at UCLA Medical Center on the staff and faculty. Over 15 cures. Let's listen to the cures of spasmodic dysphonia that the medical profession, academia, my field, and Allegan guarantee does not exist. <laughs> 